This audio is like top 10 lies to refute about Gary Johnson. It's amazing to me how people won't do their homework. And they just want to lie about him. But let me preface this by saying I didn't even know the guy's name until April. I was going to vote Republican. I wanted Jeb Bush. Then when he dropped out, I wanted John Kasich. And then when he dropped out, it was like, oh, now what am I going to do? Because Trump is like evil, just sheer evil. And I don't think that Hillary Clinton herself is sheer evil, but her, all of her policies are. Anybody who promotes big government to solve a problem, there's something substantially wrong with their brain. Okay, history tells you that big government is what causes a nation to fail. I don't care where you look in history. I don't care what kind of government you look at, what kind of um, economic system it is. When it gets big, it fails. You want small government for a healthy polity of any kind. Okay? So I don't want her either. So I'm like, well, now what am I going to do? Gary Johnson. Okay, so now we're going to launch into the top ten lies because these were all lies I heard and I had to go look at. Number one, Gary is a pothead. Uh, no. Now you're going to have to like search this yourself so you can see it yourself and know it's not just me. But he doesn't even smoke, so how can he be a pothead? Number two, because he had an injury, he tried to smoke from 2005 to 2008. Use those years in your Google search. Okay, 2008 was kind of a long time ago. So he's not a pothead. Number three, he's got celiac disease, which means he's allergic to gluten. Okay, most of the time when marijuana is made, it's made in stuff that contains gluten. So his ability to even eat it, which is the other way to get marijuana, is pretty limited. And he hasn't had any since, what, end of May, according to his own words. Okay, you can Google on that. You can see him say it in YouTube. I have a video that's in YouTube under brain, that's one word, Audi, that's the other word, it says, you know, Gary and Bill for present resources. And just look in the vid description and you can find all those videos. You don't have to watch my video. I'm not important. But the links are. So Gary's not a pothead. He's actually for it because he thinks it will reduce crime and reduce costs. And he makes a pretty powerful argument for it. And because of medical marijuana might be able to help a lot of really important diseases. I didn't know any of that. I hate marijuana. So I've come around 180 degrees on that topic. And there are several topics that Gary espouses, several positions that I I disagree with him on. But then when I listen to him talk, I'm like, well, you know, maybe you're right. Okay? That's a big deal. If somebody can espouse a position that you disagree with them on and you listen to them and then you start thinking, well, gee, you know, you're making some really good points. Maybe I should rethink my position. That's what I've had to do. Okay? So, first big lie, he's a pothead. No. Second big lie, oh, Gary believes in abortion. Uh, no. Red State said he was the most pro-life of all the candidates. I didn't know that. I don't believe in pro-life, by the way. The Bible says that abortion is not murder. I don't believe in abortion either, because I'm adopted. The Bible says you're not human until you're born, Genesis 2-7. But there's no law against abortion in the Bible. So I'm not in favor of the pro-lifers, but you know what Gary said? that he is personally pro-life. And I, I really had my own Aleppo moment then, because I'm like, oh God, if he's pro-life, I don't like the pro-lifers. But then he says he's personally pro-life, but he doesn't think the government or him has a right to impose a decision about abortion on somebody else. 
And I'm thinking, okay, well then he's agreeing with the Bible, but he doesn't even know he's agreeing with the Bible. I, I, look, I can prove that the Bible says abortion is not murder. In the Hebrew and the Greek, I've done videos on it in my pro-life blasphemy playlist. He doesn't know about that. It's just his personal position. He is personally pro-life. Red State says that the the legislation he passed as New Mexico governor was more pro-life than Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. He defunded Planned Parenthood. Well, pro-life was like that. I do too, but for a different reason. Government shouldn't be involved in any social issues at all. Period. That is a libertarian position. I didn't know that until after April. Government should be small. If it's small, it cannot deal with and should not deal with social issues. The Constitution does not give the federal government the right to do anything with respect to social issues. That's left to the states. And that's Gary's position even on pot. He would eliminate it being a federal crime. But the states are still able to regulate against marijuana if they want. Isn't that proper? Then the states that want to allow it will, and the ones who don't will, and then those who want to do medical research can. Because what about all those kids with epilepsy? Apparently marijuana helps them. And there's two kinds of marijuana. One kind doesn't even get you high. But so long as marijuana itself is a crime, you can't do any research to find out what to do about it. That was lie number one. Lie number two, Gary is not, you know, he's pro-abortion. No, he's not. And he would allow, he expressly says, that he would keep on the books, keep on the books, Roe versus Wade, all those 20-week laws, and the Hyde Amendment. That's real important to pro-lifers. That's what they wanted Ted Cruz to do, but Ted Cruz defected over to vile Donald Trump. Okay, but Gary didn't. So if you're a pro-lifer, you should want this guy. That was lie number two. Gary's pro-abortion. No, he's not. Nobody's pro-abortion. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know anybody who's pro-abortion. But they're pro is that it's between the woman and her doctor, or the woman and the guy, and the woman and God. The latter is the Bible's position. Go see Numbers twenty, Numbers five twenty-seven. That's episode nine in my pro-life blasphemy playlist. Go read, go see it in the Hebrew. God actually orders an abortion there, and I show you the lexicon where the scholar who was translating the passage was so shocked that God was ordering an abortion, he wondered if the woman had had illicit sex. It's in the theological work workbook of the Old Testament. I show it live in the video. That's one of the most respected lexicons among pastors. So, no, Gary's not pro-abortion. He's also not pro being arrogant and dictating to somebody else what they should do or not do in that situation. That's the biblical position. Okay, so that's lie number two. Let's go to lie number three because it's so popular. Gary doesn't know anything about foreign policy. Really? In 2012, when he was running for president then, he did an article. And you can search on that article in Google, 2012, Gary Johnson, 2012, Quarter, Q-U-A-R-T-E-R, Al-Qaeda, spelled A-L-Q-A-E-D-A. -A -E and you'll find out, oh, he knew about the deployment of the Syrian and anti-Syrian and all the little goofball sex, S-E-C-T-S that were vying in 2012 before Syria fell and was warning us to stay out. So he kind of does know quite a lot about Syria. He's been talking about it since 2012. And had we listened to him, there would be no Aleppo crisis. 
Now, if it's 6 o'clock in the morning, and I, I majored in foreign policy, okay? I was going to go to the UN and work 40 years ago. If you had asked me at 6 o'clock in the morning, what what is Aleppo? Like stinking Mike Barnacle did. I, I might hesitate to not understand either. Even though my major was foreign policy and I was doing mock UN as Saudi Arabia since I was 18. I know quite a bit about foreign policy in the Middle East, primarily because I was interested in Bible. And I was selected to do the mock model UN when I was 18 playing Saudi Arabia. So I kind of know about the places in that area. But at 6 o'clock in the morning, if you had asked me, I'd go, huh? Allah what? Because I'd be thinking Allah or Allah or Illah. Those are all Arabic words. I'd be thinking of the Arabic words. Because Arabic's a lot like Hebrew. You just have to get used to the spelling. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't know what he was talking about either. Of course, at 6 o'clock in the morning, I might not know my own name. But as I just cited to you, and you can Google, in 2012, not only does Gary know very well about the problems in Syria, but nobody listened to him. And a whole lot of people are dead now because they didn't. Now, to be honest with you, that was another big topic where I had a disagreement with Gary. So far, we're, hit, we're batting three for three. Three top lies about Gary that I didn't know were anything said about Gary because I didn't know who Gary was. All these three topics I differed with him on at first. Because I do have a huge background in foreign policy going back to age 18. I, got, I decided I didn't want to go work at the UN because I realized it was just a farce. So I went and got into something else after college. But that was my major. Now, I differed with Gary because I thought, well, you know, we really should be involved in Syria. Yeah, and then after I read his 2012 article, I'm like, you know what? I didn't pay attention enough to all the different factions there. Maybe he's right. And he constantly says, because he's been talking about this since 2012, you can Google it in your, in, or go to YouTube and just listen to any of his speeches. He talks about it every time. He says, look, when have we ever intervened in a regime change and it worked? That's a good point. Intervention is not World War I and II. We were forced into those wars. They don't count. Intervention is not Korea. Although he would classify, he would include Korea, I wouldn't. We were pretty much forced into the Korean conflict. But you have to argue, yeah, he's got some accuracy there. But look at the rest of them. Vietnam, that was the, what caused the founding of the Libertarian Party. Vietnam didn't work. I'm of the, the Vietnam generation. The very first boy I ever kissed got killed there. I debated Vietnam in high school because it was newly on then. It was going on then. 1968 to 1971. I was debating it. I went all around the country debating it. Yeah, well, no, not all around the country. That's not true. All around California. Big difference. Uh, see, I had to correct myself. That's another thing about Gary. He corrects himself. He says if he doesn't know, or he says, you know what, I'm, I, can't, I can't answer that right now. I have to think about it. Or, like you said tonight, I'm having an Aleppo moment. Yeah, that's the next thing about Gary that's so interesting. He was asked, and I can't get over how, how vile, no offense, how vile Chris Matthews was to ask him this. Chris Matthews asked Gary, who's your favorite foreign leader? I bet he wouldn't have asked that question to Hillary Clinton. If he had asked her, she would have to say, as a good diplomat, if she's a good diplomat, well, I can't answer that. 
Yeah, you better not. You're running for President of the United States. You're not supposed to play favorites with your foreign leaders. You're supposed to be friends with all of them. And so Gary very coyly says, oh, I'm having an Aleppo moment. Yeah, that was about the smartest thing he could say. He didn't insult Chris for asking the question. He didn't name anybody, and he didn't say he shouldn't name anybody, even though he shouldn't. He blamed himself. And then Bill, who's like a foreign policy expert par excellence, that's what he's been doing for the last 20 years. That's why he's the perfect VP for Gary. Even Bill was like, oh boy, what am I going to say? So what Bill did is he named a dead guy, Shimon Peres. Yeah. Everybody could understand that name. And he's dead, so it's okay to name him. You see, that way, and this is the important thing, if somebody running for president, stupid like Donald Trump, says, oh, I like Putin, oh, I like Kim Jong-un, oh, I like Saddam Hussein, that makes you look real bad, doesn't it, Donnie? You don't even know you're so damn dumb. You never name a favorite foreign leader if you're running for president or you are president. You don't do that. It's bad diplomacy. It makes everybody you didn't name look like an enemy. And Gary was smart. And Bill was smart. And Chris Matthews was dumb. And all the people criticizing Gary because he couldn't name a foreign leader didn't even begin to understand the importance of diplomacy. Hmm? So, your third big lie, oh, Gary doesn't know anything about foreign diplomacy, honey. He knows more about it than uh, the people who are accusing him. Can't you tell? I mean, I, this is my area of expertise. And I didn't agree with him about not intervening in Syria, but he's right. It hurts to admit that, but it's true. Now let's go on to lie number four. And this one should be obvious too, but I don't know why it's not. If I vote for Gary, I'm wasting my vote. Really? Think about that for a minute. That claim is based on another claim that says your vote doesn't count unless you vote for the two parties we tell you to vote for. So what, your vote doesn't count unless it's popular? What, 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 what's freedom? Freedom means that you can do whatever the heck you want, you vote your conscience, or you act according to your own beliefs, and honey, it don't matter if the whole world doesn't agree with you. Your freedom counts, and you can exercise it because it's your freedom. If you wanted to write in Mickey Mouse, your vote counted for Mickey Mouse. Now, of course, what the duopoly is trying to do is make you feel nervous or make you feel bad. And what does that tell you? That tells you that your vote does count. Your vote counts so much they want to dissuade you from voting for Gary. The Republicans would have would dissuade you from voting for Gary by telling you, well, you're then you're voting for Hillary Clinton. The Democrats would dissuade you from voting for Gary, including the President of the United States himself. What a liar he is. Why would they bother to dissuade you from voting for Gary if your vote didn't count? They don't want you voting for Gary because your vote does count if you vote for Gary. And they don't want you to vote for Gary because they want Hillary Clinton to win. And I just lost all respect for Barack Obama today. That he would call, he would make calls saying, don't you dare vote for, Hill vote for Gary because then Hillary Clinton won't win. You liar. You're not my president anymore. I had respect for you. Not a lot, because your decisions have been so horrible. But once you did that, you proved yourself just as bad as Donald Trump. 
just as bad as the GOP. So look, your vote really does count. If it didn't count, why is everybody trying to tell you how to vote? So your vote for Gary actually counts for Gary, and they don't want that. Yeah, you and about 30% of the rest of the world, the rest of the, co the country who's voting, and by the way, since about half the actual population votes, that 30% wanting to vote for Gary among the millennials means that they could be 60% of the final vote. But the thing is, is even 30% can win. Because in this election, in this election, because of the way the electoral votes work, if everybody got 30% and the remaining 10% was just for write-ins or whatever, among three people getting each 30%, the one of them who has one more vote than the other two, that person wins all of the state's electoral votes. So now think about that. You got 50 states. Two of them, they have this little quirky thing with two of their electors or four of their electors. So we'll say 48 states. 48 states, if they split three way, one person can win by 50 votes, 48 votes. And none of them are getting more than 30%, because that's the way our electoral college works. Whoever gets the most votes in the state wins the whole set of electoral votes for that state. Repeat, wash, rinse, repeat 48 times, and guess what? Gary can win 270 or more easily because the millennials are like scattered all over the states. Your average age in the states is about the age of the oldest amongst the millennials, about 34 years old, 34, 35. Couple of states like Maine, their average age is older, 44. And Maine is having a problem now because their average age is that old. 44 is old. You see the point? Millennials have the right in the election to vote. Millennials have the power to vote whoever they want. And the older people in the Republican and the Democratic Party, people who are my age, of the Vietnam generation, are trying to bully you guys into voting their way as if you were too stupid to live. Don't do that. Your vote counts no matter who you vote for. Vote your conscience. So much for the fourth lie against Gary, in this case Gary and Bill. I guess you could say the fifth lie is a common claim I've heard. Oh, but Gary doesn't have enough experience to be President of the United States. Actually, he and Bill, separately or combined, have more experience than either or both Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. Gary has extensive business experience. He's wealthy. He did what Donald Trump pretends to have done. Gary actually did it. Gary wasn't a politician when he ran for office in, as governor of New Mexico. He just felt like he wanted to do that. And he spent 510000 of his own money. He never took any money from anybody else until the last couple of days before the election, he laughs. He got checks that came in, but he never, he never played favorites. He isn't beholding to anyone, and the same is true now. And when he was in office, he was known as Governor Vito. Because he vetoed so many bills that people wanted for their special interests. He's totally against crony capitalism like Bernie Sanders, except Gary has a better plan for getting rid of crony capitalism than Bernie Sanders does. Bernie Sanders would increase taxes. That doesn't get rid of crony capitalism. That makes it more enmeshed. I love Bernie, but he doesn't understand how taxes work. Income tax is what the government uses in order to get power over you. Gary knows that we should eliminate the income tax. 
That will do more to eliminate corny capitalism than anything else. Apparently Hillary Clinton doesn't know that because she's not advocating it. Donald Trump sure doesn't know that. Corny capitalism exists because the cronies and the lobbyists in Washington are there in order to get a special tax break. Well, if there's no income tax, there's no special tax break to get. Bernie didn't seem to understand that. Gary does. So right there alone, he's more qualified than everybody else running because he's the one guy who understands we have to get rid of the income tax in order to get rid of crony capitalism and create jobs. Now what Gary doesn't know, but I know better than him, is what kind of replacing sales tax do you have to have to make it work? And the answer is an 8% federal sales tax on everything that's retail, only retail. That's the only way to make life cheaper for the poor. Because as it stands right now, when you buy a can of tomatoes at Walmart, where do you think the sellers are getting their money to pay their income tax? They're getting it from you, the buyer. So if there's no income tax, then the cost to you is cheaper or because there's no income tax your own pay having no deductions for an income tax means you effectively got a raise even though your pay is still the same approximately a 30 percent raise even net of the 8% sales tax you only pay when you go to the store and buy something or when you pay for lawyer's advice. See, right now, federal sales tax is only on certain things. I, it only needs to be 8% if it's on everything retail. In other words, I charge consulting fees to my clients. I would add an 8% sales tax on what I charge them. That way, they pay the tax when I charge them. That's why it only has to be 8%. The more you sell of something, the more iterations you have of something that's sold, the cheaper it can be per time. That would cause about, oh, 5% to 8%. Won't, wouldn't happen at first. 5 to 8% federal growth. I mean, um, economy growth. Gary doesn't know all that. I do because it's my field. But he's the only guy who knows that the sales tax is better. So yes, he's more qualified and experienced. He and Bill Weld both have similar experience. Bill Weld was uh, the governor of Massachusetts. And they were then Republicans over Democrat states and the Democrats loved them. Oh. So maybe they actually know a thing or two about cutting budgets? and saving taxes and yet keeping services. On top of that, Gary's a real big supporter of EPA and the um, Civil Rights Act. He actually cares about Black Lives Matter. He doesn't just mouth it to get votes. He's, he's going through his own epiphany right now because until all these crimes happened, he didn't realize that there was so much racism elsewhere in the country and it's kind of not libertarian of him to want civil rights to be enforced so blacks would be better off and, I mean it's personal to him you can hear him talk about it yourself he's always saying all lives matter but black lives matter and then he goes into this you know, he sort of canned his pitches so that he, you can remember what he says. Blacks are six times more likely to get shot or four times more likely to get incarcerated. This is ridiculous. We can't have this. To him, it's a kind of personal crusade. And he doesn't get a big, he doesn't get a lot of applause when he says that. He doesn't care. See, that's what I want. I want somebody who's honest. And he's obviously experienced, and he takes things to heart. And they've been governors over Democratic states. Well, that's the same thing as being president. It's just over some smaller. Now, the bigger point to make about this is that they are really keen on balancing the budget, eliminating the income taxes, I mentioned, 
and getting us to find a way to pay down our debt. Nobody else is doing that. They're also honest about Social Security. That's another area of my expertise. Social Security is going bankrupt in 2019. Gary thinks it's 2030. Okay, well, his dad is a little bit off. It's 2019. In 2019, the amount of money coming in to Social Security is less than the money that has to go out to pay benefits. There isn't any money in savings of Social Security. The only thing in Social Security is a bunch of IOUs by Congress who robbed, raped the Social Security Trust Fund. And I saw them do it 40 years ago. And 40 years ago, Congress knew that this was a problem because one of my clients showed me the proposal about how they were going to try to privatize Social Security because they knew they were going to go bankrupt 40 years ago. And they've just been betting on the come ever since. Well, honey, you can't do that come 2019. 2019 is the last year when the money coming into Social Security equals the money that has to be paid out because there ain't money already sitting in there. Gary thinks it's 2030 when it goes bankrupt. No, it's 2019. Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump will not address that. The President of the United States lies. Oh, we're going to improve Social Security. We're going to make it bigger. No, honey. That's why you know for sure it's going to go bankrupt next year, the year after next. Because they're hiding it under the rug. They're just, this is like when you write a check and you know there's no money in your bank account right now, but you're expecting by the time somebody cashes a check that the money will be in your bank account. Yeah, and what if it's not there? So you want to talk about who's more experienced? Gary and Bill. They're also obviously more honest. Okay? So let's see. How many of those have we gotten? We've got the pothead thing, the pro-life thing, the foreign policy thing, the experience thing. Is that four? I think there were five, but I don't remember what the fifth was. Okay? But I'm at 32 minutes now. I have to think of the other five. Peace out.